And this is a really exciting opportunity for all of us here at Ready Seafood today to talk not only about this new cold crack raw lobster meat, but also the chance that the Alliance took on Ready Seafood about three or four years ago in the form of an amazing grant opportunity that helped us invent, invest in high pressure processing technology. For those of you listening in today who aren't really sure what high pressure processing or HPP technology is, all you have to do is go to your local grocery store and you're surrounded by products that have been through the high pressure processing process. Everything from your smoothies to your prepackaged deli meats to your guacamoles to your salsas, all are there as a result of high pressure processing technology. Here at Ready Seafood, with the support of the Alliance, invested in one of these machines two years ago as we built this beautiful facility that we're in right now. The majority of products utilize high pressure processing to extend the shelf life and improve the food safety aspects of the products they produce. Essentially, you put packaged products into one of these machines, crank the pressure right up to 40, 50, 60 plus thousand PSI, and that pressure alone kills all those bugs associated with breaking food down. With crustaceans, like our delicious lobster, it has the added benefit of one, being able to put them in one of these machines and kill them humanely. Even PETA agrees with us on that. And also it separates the meat from the shell. So you can put a lobster in one of these machines or many lobsters in one of these machines, crank up the pressure. The lobster comes out on the other end looking exactly the same, but the difference is you can then shuck raw lobster meat that has never touched heat out of the shell of those lobsters. And what you end up with is an amazing, beautiful, raw lobster meat that is so versatile and the culinary opportunities are truly endless as we will see here today with Chef Rob. So one of the recipes that I learned when I was uh, working for some French master chefs in Vermont was how to make a mousseline. And a mousseline is a filling. Uh, oftentimes it's made with a uh, white fish or scallops. Um, and it's beautiful like that, but it's never really been possible to make a mousseline with lobster until we were able to get raw shellless lobster. And we've got uh, 25 grams of egg white, the 175 grams of lobster, and then we've got a little bit of salt and cayenne. And we are going to pulse this mixture, so it's going to get a little loud. And what we're looking for is for this to start moving around the bowl in kind of a large lump. Once that happens, we're going to add in 50 grams of heavy cream. And we're going to add this heavy cream in through the pour stop while the blender is pulsing. So we're going to pulse, we're going to pulse, we're going to pulse. We're going to, pulse. We're going to take this mixture, which uh, if you can see on the camera, it looks you know, nice and emulsified. You can see it's relatively thick. It stays kind of in place. Now, I cheated a little bit, and I already passed some through a drum seat, and I've got it set up here in a piping bag. We'll set that aside, and we're going to use this mousseline. We are going to fill some tortellinis, some mezzalunas, and if we have time, we might even do some agnolotti, which is just another shape of pasta. So to make our tortellinis, we're going to use a ring mold or a ring cutter here, and we are going to cut out some rounds. And you want to do, you know, it's probably about two and a half grams um, or a, uh, you know, bubblegum sized pile of filling. Those are beautiful. So we're just going to pipe that right on there. Now, very important for, thank you, Kurt, very important for sealing lobster, uh, or for sealing pasta. You want to just lightly dampen your finger, and then we're going to fold it in half. We're going to pinch, 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 pinch. And then we're going to pick it up, and we're going to take that bottom, and we're just going to pinch that right together. And we're gonna end up with a beautiful little tortellini like that. And so we'll form up a few of these guys. And so now with the regular lobster ones, we'll do our mezzaluna shape. And uh, we'll just simply fold those in half and pinch and then stop there. And so we'll have some really pretty little kind of like packets of uh, lobster, similar to like a pierogi or a dumpling. This is the kind of thing that I think, you know, makes a great family project, spend some time cooking together. This is fun. Yeah, absolutely. For our sauce, we're gonna heat up a saute pan. And I've already got some water boiling for the pasta back here. 
we're going to do a lobster cognac sauce. And uh, we're going to start out in our pan with a little bit of butter. Kurt's eating more of the ceviche, guys, so we're going to give him another job. All right, so we're going to start out with a little bit of butter. We got about 10 grams here. Once that melts, we're going to add to that butter a little bit of shallot and a little bit of mushroom. Okay, and into that shallot and mushroom, we're going to add a little bit of tomato paste and a little, a couple of sprigs of thyme. So now, anytime that you're working on sauteing some vegetables, I recommend adding in a little pinch of salt. Salt's going to help kind of break down that shallot a little bit, and it's going to help pull the moisture out of those vegetables and into the rest of. The, uh, the sauce. So we're going to go ahead and go in with our spray of thyme. We're going to go ahead and go in with our little bit of tomato paste. We're starting to smell sweet and delicious. We've got a little bit of uh, cognac here. And we're going to do something called a uh, flambe. Okay, so hopefully we've got enough heat here on this burner. Um, doesn't always flambe, but we're going to uh, we're gonna do our best to have a little fireball here. So. I'm going to go right in with that. There we go. That's not totally for TV, but you know, it's pretty darn fun for TV. So, That's pretty awesome. Uh, all right, so we got a nice flambe on that. And then the next thing we're going to go in with is we're going to go in with a little bit of lobster stock. So, whenever I, uh, you know, buy seafood or, or buy, uh, you know, lobsters for lobster rolls or something like that, I always save my shells and I make lobster stock. Um, you can also, I've seen Bar Harbor Foods um, sells a bottled lobster stock as well. While this is reducing down, since we're gonna have to wait a couple of minutes, maybe we're gonna kick it over to Kurt. We're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about fried lobster. One of the many things we've been thinking about with this product is as you travel up and down the coast of New England and beyond, there are dozens, if not hundreds of clam shacks all over the place where you can get fried clams, fried scallops, fried shrimp, Wonderful, amazing products coming from the ocean. But one thing you don't see on the menu is fried lobster. The reason for that is when you think lobster, you're either going to boil it, steam it, and pick the meat. And once you pick that meat, once it's already touched heat, it makes it very difficult to fry A because the batter will hold and B because you're cooking it twice. Well, with this product right here with our raw lobster meat, that problem is solved. So we've been doing a lot of work on the frying front. And we really feel that this cold crack lobster meat is the perfect partner with hot oil. Uh, we're going to dredge the lobster, lobster into that cream, and then we're going to put some into that fry mix. You want to let it sit for just a second in the fry mix before you put it into the fryer. Uh, and then we're going to go right into some hot oil. So the oil is about 360, 365. And uh, we're going to end up with some really beautiful crispy lobster. Should we go for it? Yeah, but bottom in there. This is my new favorite sound right here. Oh yeah, that's right. And we're talking 90 seconds tops, and you come out with a product that just wow. is unbelievable. You can see how that bread holds right there. Yeah, look at that. Really, really just spectacular. Incredible, crispy, and beautiful. To go back to our sauce here. So we, we had 200 grams of that fortified lobster stock. We added in 100 grams of cream. And we're up to a nice boil and we're, we're reducing down. Um, so as this comes down just a little bit thicker, we're going to add in a little bit more of our uh, cold cracked lobster here. Um, so this is, has been chopped up just a little bit. Um, by chopping it, it's going to uh, help us get a little bit more dispersal throughout the dish so everybody gets a little bit of lobster. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this boiling pot here with our uh, mezzaluna pasta. And we're going to use the same sauce for both types of pasta. But we're going to plate them two different ways. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go in with our tortellinis as well. And now my sauce is getting real close. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with my lobster. And again, um, just like that fried uh, lobster a minute ago, you really don't need to cook this for very long. You know, lobster cooks very quickly. The, the recommended minimum temperature for seafood is only 145, um, which, you know, the water coming out of the tap at your house is probably about 145, so not extremely hot, right? 
Okay, so we're gonna go right in to our lovely little cream and lobster stock bath with this cold cracked lobster. Um, our pasta is already floating, which is a good indication um, that it's close to being done cooking. And so we're gonna plate that up here in just one minute. Don't wanna cook the pasta for very long. Unlike your dry pasta at the grocery store, this pasta will only take two minutes to three minutes to cook uh, because it is a fresh egg pasta. And so we're just gonna finish this up with a nice pile of grated Parmesan and then finish with some beautiful chives. And uh, we'll put these under the, uh, the camera for a close up. Thank you all for joining today. Thank you, Chef Rob and Kurt. You did a fabulous job. Thanks, everybody. That was a lot of Thank fun. Thank you. Thank you.